Surprise! Sinurprise din po ako ni Ate Che. Nung Wednesday, sinabi niya sa akin, pwede ka bang mag-speak? <laughs> Fortunately, dahil ate ko siya, <laughs> and syempre, para naman sa Panginoon nito, so, hindi hinihindian yun. Pag hiningi sa'yo na magsalita ka, magsasalita ka. And uh, also, uh, it was, it's actually, I suppose, Tadhana. <laughs> it was divinely ordained uh, because this is one of my um, favorite topics or one of those that I've uh, studied. <laughs> okay. I hope you'll find our title interesting. <laughs> sa mga hindi po nakakakilala sa akin, I am Dr. Elizabeth Puguon. I specialize in nuclear medicine. Okay. Para ta tanggalin ko na po yung connotation, although ito yung title ng aking uh, message for this morning. Sa nuclear medicine po, hindi po kami gumagawa ng bomba. Pero naiintindihan ko po yung proseso kung paano gumawa ng bomba. Kaya yun ang gagamitin kong metaphor for our, uh, for our message this morning. But uh, before we begin, may I ask uh, that you join me in prayer. Um, let's open up the heaven's gates, okay? And let's just ask for God's presence and His Spirit to be with us this morning. Let's pray. Father God, hallelujah, we truly raise up our voices in praise and worship for you this morning, Lord God, as you have given us once again another day that is filled with promise, filled with joy, filled with so much blessings. And we have seen it from the beginning of this ceremony, Lord, I, this celebration, Lord God, and we continue to feel it, Lord God. And we pray, Father God, that you open up your gates, Lord God, and just pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out your blessing and open up our minds, Lord. Open up our hearts to receive your message. Lord, let you and only you be glorified by the words that I say, Lord. May your message be conveyed, Lord God, through this servant, Father. And we pray, Father God, that we learn, each and every one of us, listening right now to your word, Lord, we pray that we learn from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, I wasn't here last week, pero because of the advancement of technology, I was able to listen to our uh, pastor's sermon last week po. And uh, he continued our uh, topic on spiritual warfare. And uh, sabi nga ni pastor, the Ephesians is actually a war manual. And the key verses on how to fight a spiritual battle or to engage in spiritual warfare is found in the book of Ephesians, in, the, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And now we are going to continue to treat it as our war manual. This is the script that we will be using as we face our spiritual battles. Thank you. Uh, last week po, simul sinimulan na ni Pastor yung uh, punto about the power of God uh, na kasama natin and yung sandata natin, the full armor of God. So, na-describe doon ng, ni Pastor yung uh, yung armor from the helmet, the breastplate, the, ayan, thank you, <laughs> the shield, the belt of the truth, the feet that is uh, prepared with the gospel of peace, and of course, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Na-mention din ni Pastor, actually, that although our picture here depicts an armor of God with six, six particular pieces of the armor, there is a seventh piece of armor. And that is 
prayer. In verse 18, we hear uh, Paul say, With every prayer request and request, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance and every request for all the saints. Now, um, parang if you read it uh, in some versions, uh, tuloy-tuloy kasi yan, the armor of God, and then kasama na yung verse 18 dun sa sentence na yon. So it's really part of the armor. In others, they've separated it in parang a different paragraph. Now, uh, scholars have been trying to decipher, will you really consider prayer as your seventh piece? Nasabi na ni Pastor, seven is the best and perfect number, di ba? Is prayer really the seventh piece of armor? Uh, let's go back to the fact that Paul was, Paul was writing this at a time when, sige, balik tayo dun sa first picture, at a time when going to war meant looking like this meant you wore a helmet, you had a breastplate, you had a belt, you had your boots, you had your shield, and you had your sword. That is how you go into battle at the time that Paul was writing this letter. What then is prayer in this scenario? So, naghanap ako ng other metaphors that we can use. So, the first one, is the one that was from ancient time then. Fire. I mentioned ni Pastor actually about the art of war. I, I, I've read that uh, before. And there is an entire chapter in the art of war by Sun Tzu describing how to fight with fire. Fire at that time, th this is a depiction of a Grish, uh, the Greek fire. Or sa atin ngayon, it's like a bomb, bomba, a bomb. Okay, pero siyempre noon, wala pa silang ganong klaseng concept. So at the time that, the, uh, that Paul was writing, fire would have been the strongest weapon that uh, armies would have been using, di ba? It had a devastating effect and uh, even in China, uh, where the art of war was, the, the author of the art of war was from, Dinescribe niya doon, isang chapter ginamit talaga niya, this is what you do when you fight with fire. There is a certain season, meron kang, uh, meron kang gagawin kung, kung yung fire eh, coming from within or coming from without, uh, what your, your soldiers are supposed to do, because that is their strongest weapon. So, in my, uh, in my analysis, Kay Paul siguro, yung prayer would be that fire. Kasi palalakasin niya yung army mo na nakasuot ng armor na yon. Okay? It, it gives them courage na, we have this Greek fire. So, mas mabilis silang magano. Ma parang mas ma-encourage sila to fight that battle. Now, go, punta naman tayo sa medyo mas, mas future na Centuries later, uh, prayer becomes parang an airstrike or a bomb from, I hate to say from the heavens, but a bomb from the skies. A weapon from the skies that just falls on every city while turning all those cities into dust. Diba? There is very little defense against an airstrike. And that is what prayer is too. You cannot defend against prayer. Kaya nyo ba? Pinagpre-pray mo ako. Hindi mo kaya yun, di ba? You can't do that. Pinagpray ka niya, wala kang magagawa. Tatanggapin mo yung prayer na yun. Kasi there's no defense against an airstrike. Well, you can send your own airstrike, pero that means you're sending also prayers, di ba? So you're pray, pray, parang you're fighting prayer with prayer. Uh, this started in Korean War, Iraq. Doon nila nakita yung devastation of dropping bombs. And in 1945, nuclear bombs na ngayong ginamit nila. Now, for the for yung mga hindi mahilig sa war, 
pero mahilig sa movies, I have another analogy. Teng! <laughs> Sino yan? <laughs> si Iron Man. Armor din siya, di ba? Uh, with many parts. But do you know what it is that really feeds and empowers this armor? The AI or the artificial intelligence called Jarvis. Si Jarvis, yung actual na nagpapatakbo ng ar Well, of course, it's commanded by uh, Iron Man. Uh, I was gonna say Robert Downey Jr., pero ano nga pala pangalan niya lang? Tony Stark, that's right. So Tony Stark commands Jarvis, but Jarvis is actually the one who runs the armor, right? And we've seen in that movie then, nung nawala si Jarvis, the armor became nothing but a... Well... Yeah, exactly. Parang lata. Latang nahulog mula sa, sa skies. Right? So without Jarvis or without that which activates the armor, our superhero is going to lose. And in, in our analogy, without prayer, kung wala si Jarvis, ginamit mo yung, arm, yung armor na yan, pumunta ka into battle, you're basically going without any energy without any power. So that is what prayer is like when it, in relation to the armor of God. It activates your armor. It empowers your armor. It, well, may analogy na nagsabi, going into a spiritual battle with only your armor and without prayer is like having a refrigerator and not plugging it in. So nagref ka pa. Cabinet lang yon. Kung hindi mo linagyan ng power. So that is why they say that prayer is your seventh piece of armor. Uh, the seventh piece of the armor of God when you go into your spiritual battle. Now, gusto kong, let's talk more about prayer when it comes to battle. So, uh, when we were doing the analogy, we actually saw some of the roles of prayer already. As you know, as we all know, prayer is our line of communication to God. This is a direct and open line to tap into the power of God. Yung power of God na pinag-uusapan natin last week, the one that was described by Pastor Arnel last week, we can tap into that power, that power that's resurrected Jesus Christ, that power that raises you from the dead, you can tap into that power with prayer, with this line of communication that is direct and open. Walang buffering, okay? Hindi kailangan na 100 Mbps ang iyong internet para makapag-communicate ka. Okay, that is a direct and open line to that power of God. And what is even the best part for me here is this line of communication is open to anyone, no matter what rank of a soldier you are. Oh, diba? You don't have to be a general. You don't have to be the president. If, you were, uh, if you're going to launch a nuclear submarine or the, the, the missiles from the submarine, you need to have permission. And that permission only comes from the highest of the highest of the highest. And it goes through a lot of things bago ka makakuha ng, ng permission to launch that weapon. With prayer, kahit na private, first class, whatever ka pa na soldier, you can use this weapon. And you can communicate with God. You can tap into that power even if you are the, the lowest of the soldiers. In our church, that means that hindi lang si pastor ang may karapatang mag-pray to tap into the power of God. Diba? Each and every one of us in this room and uh, anywhere, whoever's listening to us, if you want to tap into the power of God, into that power of God that resurrected the dead, you can just pray. And because the line is open, and direct, you will be heard. Isn't that amazing? 
Amen. That's the role of prayer in our warfare. Next. It also provides and gives access to that armor. Maalala nyo yung armor na pinag-uusapan natin? Sometimes uh, other people are afraid. Wala ako nung armor. Wala akong sword. I don't have the truth. I don't have the, the spirit of God. I don't have the word. I mean, I don't have the word of God. I don't have the shield. But actually, prayer, this seventh piece of God's armor, allows you to ask for this armor. Hingin mo sa Panginoon na ibigay sa yo yung armor na yan. And what will happen? It will be given. Diba? pakalakas ng seven piece of uh, seven piece of uh, armor na to. Next, uh, we've already mentioned kanina, it also uh, activates it activates the rest of the spiritual armor. The, the analogy a while ago that I used si Jarvis tsaka si Ay- yung Iron Man suit It's only effective because there is an AI. It's only effective because there is the power in that suit. At kung nawawala yung power sa suit na yon, nagiging useless ang ating armor. Same, it, same is true with the rest of the spiritual armor of God. If you go into battle without prayer, if you go into battle na walang daladalang prayer, Victory is very unlikely. Kaya nga, di ba, ilang beses nating ipinagpre-pray ang ating mga missionaries, ang ating missions, yung mga activities natin, the first thing that we do before tayo mag-meeting, pinagpre-pray muna natin yung mga activities na to. Because kahit na gaano kaganda yung pagplano mo ng isang activity, gaano ka, ka, ano ma, ka, gaano ka inspired or gaano ka ka kadetalye lahat ng iyong mga plano kung hindi mo binugburan ng panalangin kung hindi mo inopen yung ways with your prayer victory is unlikely and of course prayer is our most powerful weapon Sabi nga sa Corinthians, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage battle according to flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. They are destroying arguments and all arrogance against, raised against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So that's the power of prayer. It can break down strongholds. The, the strongest strongholds are actually those that are in your hearts and in your minds. It's not the building. The buildings can be rebuilt. Your shields can go up again. But with prayer, this divinely powerful weapon can actually break down barriers within your heart and within your mind and how you think. And uh, the thing about, uh, not yet, <laughs> the thing about this is that hindi lang kasi, I, I, uh, siguro I, I have to make clear here first that the one we are battling with is Satan or the evil one, okay? Hindi po tao ang kalaban natin, ha? kasi I'm talking about weapons and talking about warfare, baka ang inisip nyo ay kakalabanin. Hindi yon ang ano, okay? We are in a battle against unbelief. We are in a battle against sin. Not the sinner. The sinner we are trying to reach out to. We are battling the sin. And that is what we are trying to break down. The, the, the barriers that can be destroyed by prayer is that sin. And sige po, it says here, this is a weapon that the enemy, the evil one, does not have. 
This is a weapon that the evil one cannot stop. And this is what the evil one cannot thwart. Imagine that. Hindi kayang pigilan ni Satanas ang pagdadasal. Kaya kanyang pigilan physically siguro. Pero hindi niya natatanggal ang prayer kung andyan na siya sa puso mo. Di ba? And again, there is no defense against this kind of weapon. Which is why I call our prayer a nuclear bomb. Wow. Okay. So a little background on a nuclear bomb. It has devastating effects. And when it was first used in World War II, okay, kitang-kita ng buong mundo, the entire world trembled in fear because of the devastation that can be caused by a nuclear bomb. At that time, there was no, there is no way to defend against it. And wala ka na lang ibang magagawa kundi just to surrender. Because the other, the enemy, or I mean the, the other group has the strongest weapon at that time. And because of this, nakita natin na there was a race to nuclear weapons, di ba? All those countries na who could afford to have nuclear weapons built their silos, built their, um, their plants, made their bases. So that's Russia, that's the US, that's China, um, India and Pakistan, United Kingdom and France, meron din daw, pero hindi nila alam kung how many are actually functional. North Israel, uh, medyo may secret din sila kasi hindi, hindi reported lahat ng number. Uh, North Korea also has nuclear weapons. And, and what is the effect of these nuclear weapons? There is a hesitancy in going to war against these countries. Diba? Ayaw, ayaw ng mga country na magkaroon ng war against these countries because they have nuclear weapons. And the effect of nuclear weapons are lasting. The bomb in Hiro the, that was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they st we still feel the ripples of the effects. Radioactive bombs ito that inflicted damage in a large scale and up to now, well, us in the medical field would still ask about exposure or a family lineage coming up to there pag meron kang suspicion na our patient, that's 70 years ago na, ha? pero children born at that time, kinoconsider mo pa rin na may effect, gano'n kayo kalayo as a family from that place? It's that lasting. So gano'n kalakas ang nuclear weapons. That's why there is such a tight control over nuclear weapons. Talagang monitor sila and Pag may naririnig kang may nagbibuild ng ganyan, everybody's watching because this has a devastating effect. So why this weapon of mass destruction? Why am I using it as a metaphor for prayer? Because the effect of prayer is just as lasting and as devastating. Kasi ang prayer, pag ginamit mo talaga as that weapon, as that shield, as that energy source when you go into battle, the effect is just like having a nuclear weapon in your arsenal. You can go into battle because you have a nuclear weapon in your arsenal and when you pray, hindi lang kasi nag-pray ka for the others, they have no defense against their prayer and you continue praying for them, nababago rin ng pagdadasal ang tao. Hindi po ba? Isn't it amazing na yung mga, I'm sure uh, there will be a lot of people who can testify how prayer changed their life since coming to CHCC. How having this prayerful life, having devotions, having this daily dose of prayer, binago niya ang pananaman
pananaw mo, binago niya kung paano ka makisalamuha sa tao. Binago niya kung paano mo gawin ang day-to-day -day activities. And that is a devastating, when it comes to sin, that's devastating. And the effect is lasting. And it is a generational effect, gaya din ng radioactivity. Pwede rin niyang ma-inherit ng ating mga anak. If you are a prayerful mother or a prayerful father, this prayerful attitude becomes transferred to your children and they become prayerful children who also have a nuclear bomb in their arsenal. Ganda po, no? Lakas ng prayer. The next question probably you're going to ask, how do I use this weapon? Introduction lang pala yun. <laughs> Fortunately, Paul gave us our war handbook. And one thing that he did give some elaboration on is how to pray. First off, he told us that sige, in Ephesians 6, 18 to 20, with every prayer and request, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be alert with all perseverance and every request for all the saints. Pray and pray in my behalf that speech may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known the boldness and the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We'll concentrate on the part of the prayer here. The first thing that uh, Paul would like us to know about how to use the prayer is yung first line. Pray at all times. Be in constant communication with God. God already gave us this open direct line to Him and His power. So let's use it by using it constantly throughout the day. Make it a habit to be praying. Be in an attitude of prayer for the whole day. Kasi ang atake ng kalaban, hindi naman niya hinihintay na naantok na ba siya o kaya atake na ako. Hindi ganun yung kalaban natin. Kalaban natin can attack you at any moment of the day. That's why you have to be in constant communication with God. Nagaantay kami ng taxi <laughs> kaninang umaga. Kala namin malilate na kami. So I was... Uh, Pray, nagpa-pray ako eh, underneath. The moment I said, Amen, shing, dumating na yung ano, yung, may dumating na taxi, bumaba yung pasahero dun sa harapan ng store na malapit sa amin. So, wow, binibigyan na naman ako ni Lord ng example para <laughs> ma-describe ko this morning. Constantly be in communication with God. Yun yung, that's one way to use that weapon. Next, Sabi ni rin ni Paul, pray with your prayers and with your requests. To, uh, sabi natin, lagi natin ginagawa. Y yun ngayon ginawa ko kaninang umaga, di ba? Thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord, please, pengi ng taxi na <laughs> dadala sa amin sa church. Ayaw po namin malate. At binibigay nga ng Panginoon. It's, um, Hindi naman mahirap isipin na hinihingi ng Panginoon na dalhin nyo sa Kanya ang inyong requests and petitions. You can pray to ask God for anything. Merong, ano, merong ibang nagsasabi, um, di ba meron din sinabi sa Bible that God already knows what I want even before I ask for it. So, bakit pa ako magdadasal? Why will I go pa and ask. Alam na niya kung anong kailangan ko. Uh, an answer to that would be God wants you to present your, humil your, your uh, requests to Him in humility and in order to show your dependence on Him. To recognize that these are things that you need 
and you are asking for. You are showing Him that you are dependent on God. Ipapanangalangin mo na, Lord, gusto, uh, kailangan ko po ito. Kailangan ko po ng tulong because you are recognizing His power over you and His power to be able to do for you and to do anything and everything for you. Ang napakaganda dito sa prayers is there is no hierarchy. So there are no small players, prayers, no small requests, and there are no big requests. All requests, all prayers are answered differently, pero all are heard and all are answered. And wag tayong mahihiya na humingi ng taxi. <laughs> Pag late ka na, manghihingi, magpagdadasal mo talaga ang taxi. At wag din tayong matatakot na humingi sa kanya ng napakalaki. Lord, kailangan ko po ng bahay. Lord, kailangan ko po ng kotse. Lord, kailangan ko ng trabaho. Lord, bigyan niyo po ako ng... Mm, sige. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basta, <laughs> walang large requests. Okay? Nothing is ever too big for God. Okay? Kahit yun lang po ang maiuwi nyo today. <laughs> Kahit yun lang po ang maiuwi nyo. <laughs> na wala pong... <laughs> There is nothing too big that God cannot give you. Just ask for it. Amen. Next po. Now, this is also very important. Paul tells us to pray in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit means praying according to the Word of God and praying according to the will of God. Sinasabi natin, kahit ano, pwede mong ihingi sa Panginoon. Lord, saan na ba pa yung kalaban ko? Hindi po yun, praying in the Spirit. Sana mawalan po yung trabaho, yung bully ko. That is not praying according to the Word of God and it's not a praying according to the will of God. How do we pray in the Spirit? Well, number one, get to know your God. And the way to do that is get to know His Word. This is, um, sabi natin, this needs training. Di ba? Kasi, um, like us, when you talk to someone, first time mong magkakilala, Hello, basta ka, tagasan ka. Ah, okay. First meeting. Susunod na meeting. Oh, anong work mo? Ito, na, ganyan. Next na meeting. Ah, so, may, meron ka bang mga kapatid? Ganyan. So, slowly, as you train yourself to get to know the wor- Word of God, you learn also how to speak to God as you become more and more, uh, as your relationship ship becomes deeper. You learn His word and you learn what it is that He is going to say is part of His will. So yung prayer mo nag-evolve. You are now having deep conversations with God. And that is also part of being prayerful in the Spirit. Kailangan kal- kilalanin mo yung kausap mo para ma maging deeper yung understanding mo dun sa kanyang will and deeper yung understanding mo sa kanyang word. Para rin tayo, di ba? Once you get, when you know someone, alam mo kung ano yung tatanungin mo, alam mo kung ano yung gusto mong malaman, alam mo kung ano yung gusto mong, ano yung gusto nyong pag-usapan because you know that person deep within your heart. And that is what prayer praying in the spirit is like so hindi lang superficial na sinusunod mo kung ano yung sinasabi ng biblia at yun na yung prayer mo um, sadly 
I mean, not sadly, that is a start. Okay? That's a start. Um, a, a lot of us, when we started out, I don't know how to pray. Paano ba nagdadasal? We write it out. Kailangan tama yung grammar, tama yung ano. Ganun tayo magsisimula. You based it on your the Word of God, what you have read. And as you go deeper and deeper into the relationship, your words will also evolve. At naiintindihan mo na, nagkakaintindihan kayo. So, praying in the Spirit requires training. But it is also the way that we gain that power. Yung power na binibigay ng prayer, andyan sa pagdadasal in the Spirit. Ito. Pray with perseverance. Pray with persistence. Don't give up on prayer. A spiritual warfare is difficult, especially kung ikaw yung diretsyong inaatake. Kung ikaw yung target ng kaaway, ikaw yung target ng kalaban, napakahirap makipaglaban. Pero yun ang pin, pin, sinasabi sa atin ni Paul dito, pray with perseverance. Um, sometimes it will look like your prayers are not being answered. Okay? But that does not mean na mag-give up ka na. It only means that you have to keep on praying. Ilang beses nang nasabi ni Pastor sa kanyang mga sermon, pray until something happens. Okay? <laughs> Nakalimutan na. <laughs> yeah. You push, di ba? Pray until something happens. That's praying with persistence. Again, your enemy will attack at any time. And your enemy will make it look like nobody's listening to you. But you mustn't believe the lies of the enemy and continue to pray. And, well, this is, I think, my last point. Pray with purpose. Ang sabi ng Ephesians 18e uh, up to the end of uh, that uh, up to 20 is that we pray for the petitions and the supplications of the saints and for 20 praying also for the preaching and the teaching of the gospel. Mm, gusto kong mag-emphasis more on the praying for the saints. Praying for the, praying for the saints and not praying to the saints. Huh? Praying for the saints means praying for all Christians, our Christian brother and sisters. Tayo. Ipag-pray natin ang isa't isa. Yun ang gustong sabihin ni Paul dito. Ipag-pray natin yung isa't isa because we are all soldiers in this battle. We are all here wearing this armor and we all need the prayer to push us. Ito ang... Don't just pray you dun sa mga i-reach out natin. Um, sa, some, kasi naka, naka-focus na sila dun sa pinagdatasal nila na hindi pa nanaw ng palataya. Pero pag-pray din natin yung mga kasama natin sa Panginoon. Kasi lahat tayo in this battle. And we are all fighting together. So we must pray for one another. And the last part of uh, Paul's message here is to pray for the preaching and teaching of the gospel. Mm, hindi na ako mag, masyadong mag ano, dyan, kasi that's a whole different topic. Ma, medyo ma, malaki-laking topic din yan when, when you pray for the gospel and the preaching. You're praying for the preacher, you're praying for the people, ano yan. Pero pray with that purpose in mind. Tignan nyo yung mga katabi nyo, pagdasal natin sila. Now, in my ending note, I'd like to say, just a reminder, that prayer is our most powerful weapon. It's like an indestructible nuclear bomb. It's the seventh piece of our armor, and its effects are devastating and lasting. 
So this is how we use this weapon. Shall we rise and use this weapon together? Let's rise and pray. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Father. Thank you so much, Lord God. Thank you so much for giving us prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us this weapon. Lord God, thank you that this weapon you have placed in our hands, you have given us access to it, you have given us an open line access with no hierarchy. We can just come before you, Lord. We come before you and we can pray. Yes, Lord, at any moment in our day, we can just come to you and we can pray. Lord, we worship you, Father God. We worship you because we know and we recognize that your power that you have shared through this world, Lord God, we can tap into it by simply humbling ourselves and asking for it. Panginoon, nakita po namin na ang pagdadasal ay nagpapabago ng buhay. Panginoon, nakikita po namin na ang pagbabagong ito ay nagtatagal at kaya po niya na i-reach every corner of this world. Even, Lord, if we do not move from this country, we can pray, Father God, for our brothers and sisters in the far reaches of this world because you have given us that power, Lord. You have given us this weapon, Lord. You have given us this armor. You have given us the strength and you have given us the ability, Lord, to just speak to you and ask you. And we thank you for that, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to pray through Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you for giving us the way of how to talk to you, to speak to you. Thank you, Father God, that you allow us to speak to you so openly, so directly. Thank you that we can call you Father, that we can tell you everything. We can ask you for anything and you hear us from heaven. Thank you, Father God, that no matter what we face or no matter how long we've turned away, we can always come back to you. We can always turn back to you and once again get down on our knees and pray that you return to our lives. Thank you, Lord God, that every day we can ask you to be around us. That we can ask for your spirit to strengthen us, to heal us, to give us comfort. All because you have opened your lines of communication and you have allowed us to pray. And you have listened to our prayers. Lord God, I raise my hand this morning and I'm asking you, Lord God, to bless each and every person in this room right now, Lord. Lord God, we feel your presence around us this morning. You feel you reaching out into our hearts and we feel you touching our lives, Lord. We want to reach out to you this morning, Lord God. Hold us in your hands. 
We are now devoting our lives to you. Because in our lives, we have found and we have discovered that you are not a distant God, but you are a loving Father. A loving Father, Lord, who has reached out to touch each and every life. And you have opened up your heavens and opened up your gates, Lord. So we receive your blessing, Lord God. And in return, we praise you and we worship you. In each part of our life this morning, Lord God, starting this morning, we give to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for reaching out. Thank you, Lord, for being in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you will not leave us. That in this morning, you have declared that I, you are with us. You are with us. You are with us. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.